The Andrews government is holding last-minute negotiations with crossbench MPs in a bid to pass its controversial pandemic bill through the Upper House as early as today. Joining me live now is the president of the Law Institute of Victoria, Tanya Wolfe. Tanya, good to see you. Thanks for your time this morning. Um, Dan Andrews is now pushing for more concessions, as you know, to try and keep this legislation alive. How do you make the bill fit for purpose? Well... Um, good morning, Pete. We have provided a number of recommendations um, in relation to the changes that we think that will make it fit for purpose. Uh, those include uh, provisions to allow for independent, effective oversight, external oversight of pandemic orders. It also allows for an increased role um, of perhaps the ombudsman in that, in that uh, respect to be able to do that. And we also ask for uh, judicial review um, of detention in circumstances where it's accessible for most Victorians. So uh, there's only two changes that you want to see? No, uh, we've actually provided a raft of um, but approximately the... 32 right, okay, but the changes main that we've suggested. Um, I was trying to group it into some themes, but... Uh, there are measures for, essentially, it, there are measures that can be made um, and, and provisions that can be made in the bill for effective independent oversight of the bill. Right now, you have a bill that confers extensive power on the executive. Mm. Previously, as everyone knows, that power was in the hands of the chief health executive uh, officer to mm. be able to make those uh, orders. And the, the idea of having the, that power vested in an accountable executive to parliament and to the public through the election process is a better option. However, there are other checks and balances that are really important. And we know that there are constraints within parliamentary processes which make that effective accountability not possible in its current form. So you might be aware, Pete, that the government in this Act um, empowers SARC, the Scrutiny of Acts and Regulations Committee, to review pandemic orders. Now, that committee, like most cross-parliamentary um, committees, is uh, you know constrained by politics. It's usually controlled by the government of the day. So its ability to provide effective, timely, um, and appropriate uh, oversight of very wide powers in pandemic legislation uh, of its own minister and executive is is probably um, not uh, going to be uh, in the same way as, as intended. Yeah, given that Victoria and and specifically Melbourne has been in in lockdown so much and you've got the protests obviously that are taking place at the moment so you, you you've got that energy that feeling of discontent people don't want to go back to those days of lockdown why are emergency powers even needed well unfortunately there is still the pandemic um, and we can't ignore it we have increased vaccination rates in the community and that's that's fabulous um, and that is allowing this uh, city and state to open up and, and it, you know, I think that the entire state is exhausted and frustrated, um, fatigued and have suffered so much um, over these many months that they're mm. very, very excited to be able to open up again. But, you know, it is a, it, it's a disease, it's a, it's a virus that is changeable, um, as we know, it is fatal, as we know, um, and so we need to be able to respond to it in an appropriate way. Um, and, you know, vaccination rates, we know also from external, you know, over, overseas that it wanes after a while, the effectiveness of, of vaccination, and so therefore our protection might wane as well. So I think, you know, we do need to be able to have an appropriate legislative framework. What is happening, though, Pete, is that on the 15th of December, the emergency powers regime, which is what allows the Chief Health Officer to make uh, directives that affect everyone, that will lapse. There is no longer going to be an emergency uh, declaration or emergency power regime in place. Mm. That is why the government has legislated for the pandemic bill, the pandemic management bill, to be able to, to manage a pandemic on an ongoing basis when it continues as this has for many months. And, and if it didn't have um, that bill in place, wouldn't be able to do anything, basically. Well, it would it would be constrained, and it may have to call another, um, you know, state of emergency, and then we would be back in the same situation where an unelected official is making 
the declarations that impact on us without the same degree of transparency. So, you know, in this bill, as it is now, there have been some improvements made. There is isn't, you know, a requirement that the officer has to, uh, that, that the minister who's making these orders have to consult with his chief health officer. So it's founded on health advice. It's a fundamental principle of this new bill. Also that it's compliant with human rights obligations so that the, the measures that are made are not only based on, on health advice, but they are proportionate and justified and reasonable um, to that health uh, issue. And so it doesn't encroach unnecessarily on human rights. Now, there are provisions in the bill at the moment now. It's not in the old legislation. OK. Tanya Wolfe, President of the Law Institute of Victoria. Thanks for explaining that. We'll talk to you soon. A pleasure.